grade tens, I'd like us to look at the French Revolution. Now, the French Revolution looks like a lot in your textbooks, but I want you to remember that in history, we focus on causes and consequences. So let's take a look at the French Revolution together, um, taking just a skeleton of what we need. So if we have a look at the French Revolution, it is of 1789. But the causes are before 1789. They're the things that led to the things of 1789. Now, Charles Dickens, in a book called A Tale of Two Cities, wrote, It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And so it was the best of times for the rich people, for the nobility who had privileges, and it was the worst of times for peasants who were working hard, paying huge taxes, and who felt frustrated by the system. It was also the best of times um, to that very same group that it was the worst of times for because they were fighting against a system and it made them feel empowered. It made them feel good because fundamentally it was a fight for democracy and a fight for civil and human rights and it felt good to be involved in that fight. So let's take a look at the definitions that you would need to know. So for definitions, you want to be able to define the French Revolution and then when there's big words that you don't understand, you want to put that onto a list. So for example, there's uh, the names of the different taxes. So they could look confusing, but if you put it onto a list and you say to yourself, well, that's a tax that the third estate paid, then it would make more sense to you. So any words that are big or difficult, you define them onto a list. Right, let's look at the causes. So there are five causes, and we need to know about them in different degrees. So number one, number two, and number three are very, very important. And four, we don't have to know too much about, and five, we can know a little bit about. So number one, the social order. So we need to understand that society wasn't always one where things were equal. So there was um, an unfair system that you were born into a certain social order and you died in that social order. I know there's romantic novels that tell you these beautiful stories of the chambermaid who marries the duke, but that's very rare that that would have happened. So generally, if you were born poor, you died poor. And that is a very sad situation because in our society, we believe that anyone can be anything that they want to be they're not defined by their birthplace right so let's take a look at that social order if we look there then we'll see that um in in society it was believed that god was supreme and that god appointed a king so a king and a royal family were god's representatives on earth so he's right at the top in the social order. Then comes the first estate, which is the clergy. Now, the clergy are close to God, so they're at the top. There is a little weirdness there because you've got upper clergy and lower clergy. So your lower clergy worked amongst these people. They were the priests and the ministers in the villages. Um, but because they were close to God, they were considered first estate. And then you got your second estate, and that was your nobility, people born into a title, um, and so they had privileges because they owned land, and wealth was defined by how much land you had and inherited, because it was passed on from generation to generation. And then there was the peasants, and the peasants are your third estate. Inside that group, there's also a growing group of middle class, they're also known as the bourgeoisie, and that middle class are the ones who are increasingly frustrated. They've managed to do fairly well. Um, they've perhaps um, earned a degree or a profession, and yet they can never break this barrier. They're stuck in this third estate. And so they would feel frustrated that even though they've done well in their lives, they can never move up the social order. Um, and it is particularly those educated middle class who are going to encourage a rebellion, a revolt, a revolution to change the order of how things are done. So remember, it's a fight for democracy and civil or human rights. Right, the slogan, it's very important, is liberty, equality and fraternity. So fraternity means brotherhood. So we must know that the slogan of the French Revolution was liberty, equality, fraternity or brotherhood. Now let's go back to the causes. So... The social order is going to call for liberty, 
equality and fraternity. What are the third estate grievances? That's just the complaints that they had. They felt that the taxes they paid was too high. They felt it was too much to have to work so very hard, but so much of it you had to pay, whereas the nobility, the second estate, paid no taxes. They just gained from taxes. And yet they're the ones with the money. So if they were paying taxes, that would be much better than those who don't have much having to pay much for taxes. And then probably the most interesting one is to have a look at King Louis and Maria Antoinette. So King Louis XV1, and that means the X is for 10, the V is for 5, and the 1 is for 1. So that means he's the 16th Louis to have ruled in France. And then there's Maria Antoinette, his Austrian wife. Now they married very, very young, as was the custom at the time. And because she was from Austria, she was seen as a foreigner. There was a bit of xenophobia, dislike of foreigners. Um, and people were very critical of her. And then we go to the economic crisis. So King Louis the Sixteenth was not a decisive leader, and he was criticised for spending money on things that he shouldn't have spent money for. And eventually, the system was imploding upon itself because more and more money was being spent by the the uh, king, by the nobility, and the third estate was frustrated with having to finance that extravagant lifestyle. And so ultimately we find that the decision of France to help America to fight for independence from their king would cost France a lot of money and ultimately they supported another country in removing a king and ultimately they would think, well then why can't we remove our own king? And then we speak about intellectual causes and there we're really discussing the philosophers. There was Voltaire, for example, who... Uh, convinced people almost like the social media influences of their time without social media who would write about people's rights and and that man is born free yet everywhere he is in chains or I disagree with what you say but I defend to the death your right to say it those are all ideas that sparked a change in people's thinking and a realization that you don't have to accept the way things are right then we can move to events now the events can look really scary um, it's also known as the course the road that the events took but we only want to know a sentence or two about each thing just that they happened so the estate general met and there we're just looking at a group that was supposed to be a parliament of sorts it never met it was just a sham but in the end we find out that the estate general was very important then we got, get the tennis court oath and with the tennis court oath, um, those that estate gen general is upset because they can only vote as a block. So the first estate is going to get one vote, the second estate is going to get one vote, and the third estate is going to get one vote. So obviously the third estate is going to get outvoted. So they're not happy with that. They go to an indoor tennis court and they say, I'm never leaving here until change happens. Um, and then we get the storming of the Bastille, which in South African terms would be if um, people had stormed Robben Island, because Robben Island is a symbol of oppression in South African history, and the Bastille was where political prisoners were kept. Okay, then the March of Women to Versailles. Um, again, there's a South African v version of that when the women marched in Pretoria for what we now celebrate as Women's Day, where they were protesting the passes. Yeah, it was that women were so frustrated that they couldn't even afford to buy bread to feed their children. And they marched to Versailles, which is quite far outside of Paris, to voice their um, grievances. And then we see progress being made because France has a declaration of the rights of man issued. Now, up until then, society didn't value the rights of people. And so this is the first time that people are actually saying, this is what we deem to be every man's rights. And so it's the start of our present culture of respecting human rights. And then we speak of a reign of terror, and that's quite sad. If you think that the French Revolution was fought to free people from oppression, it's quite sad that the leaders then decided that there needed to be a reign of terror to enforce the changes upon people. And so there were many people who died during this reign of terror, and so it wasn't just a peaceful change from 
an unfair system to a fair system. There were some wobbles and some unfairness and injustices along the way. And we also look at the use of the guillotine in this time. So King Louis and Maria Antoinette were both executed um, with the use of a guillotine and people would gather in the town hall, in the town courtyard um, to watch these executions. It was the thing you did at the time. And um, they say that when they held up that head, it was because of a belief that the brain still functions for a while. It still has oxygen and blood pumping through it. So even though your head's been removed from your body, for a few seconds, your brain is still working. So they held up your head in a gory kind of way to show you how happy everyone is to see that you've been killed. So that's quite scary. And then the last thing is consequences. So for consequences, we only need to take it from the note. So I just want to show you the note that I'm talking about quickly. It looks like this. You got it at the beginning of the year. You'll see there's a whole lot of definitions there. You can see I've got some more definitions there. He has a note on the slogan, liberty, equality, and fraternity. And you'll see there's some little bits and pieces you can look at. These are the grievances of the third estate. He has a little bit about why there was a revolution. You can just glance at that. And you can see there's a little bit more about the social structure of France. And then very importantly, here is a summary of the different causes using those headings I've just spoken about. And then you can see revolutionary events. It's just one paragraph if we write an essay on it where we write a sentence or two on each of these things. And so there it's set out very simply and you don't need to understand it so much. And then when we come to consequences, you'll see here is a note on consequences, no! which would be one paragraph. I'm sorry, my children are interrupting terribly. It would be one paragraph and you just have to know those sentences. So I'm just gonna pick out a few more. Peasants received land that they hadn't had. So they were upset that the land kept going from generation to generation and now it's been shared. Women gained no equal rights, but they could divorce because of the French Revolution. The power of the king in France changed completely. There was no longer a king or a monarchy. They were a democracy. The Roman Catholic Church lost some of its land and power. But very importantly, ordinary people played an important role in bringing about change. And so we speak about a concept of nationalism, which we're going to cover next year, where people feel patriotism and they feel united. I want to look at this concept, left wing and right wing. It's one that we use in politics up until today, and it started in this time. Someone who's left wing is very liberal, and someone who's right wing is very conservative. Barack Obama is left wing. President Trump is right wing. Right, and then we say that the National Convention, that's just a name for a people, the people who took over after the monarchy, they used terror to unite the nation and to defend its policies. But still, because of that, liberty was still being denied the people whilst they used terror. But sometimes the end justifies the means, and so they had to use that method to bring about change completely. So that's the French Revolution. I hope that helps. Remember, you are awesome and you are loved.